Hello friends. Today, we find ourselves amidst an exhilarating transformation in our power system. Across the world, the rapid surge in green energy initiatives is paving the way for the seamless integration of renewable sources. As a result, we are witnessing an unprecedented revolution in the behavior of the grid as we know it. Gone are the days of bulky, conventional generators, as we embrace the era of rooftop solar, solar parks, and wind parks. The shift from electromechanical systems, with numerous generators operating in unison, to electronic systems, where large electronic inverters take center stage, is upon us. With this profound change, the very essence of our electrical grid and the electricity that powers our homes is said to undergo a remarkable metamorphosis. But in the midst of this exciting transition, we must ponder, are we sufficiently secure? Is our grid prepared to handle this new paradigm shift in grid dynamic behavior and its operation? Join us on an enlightening journey as we delve into the world of inverter-based resources, integration issues faced across global power system and remedial measures in this captivating series. Now let us delve into the intriguing world of renewable integration issues. Prepare to embark on a journey where we demystify the technical challenges associated with renewable integration in a simple and accessible manner. IBR, or inverter-based resources, encounters various obstacles beyond the well-known intermittency issues. These hurdles can lead to instability within the power system, making it crucial to address them effectively and with utmost care. Failure to do so could potentially trigger grid instability, escalating into a widespread blackout of monumental proportions. Among the issues we will explore are inverter control challenges, interactions between inverter resources, inverter-induced oscillations, sudden drops in inverter-based generation following nearby faults, and loss of synchronism due to transients. Our primary focus is to comprehend the challenges faced by power system operators worldwide and uncover remedial measures that can aid in their mitigation. The essence of our endeavor lies in rapid learning and swift implementation of solutions, ultimately fostering a more stable future for integration. Get ready to unlock the secrets of IBR challenges and embark on a journey towards a resilient power system. Our first stop is the captivating realm of momentary cessation. Momentary cessation refers to a controlling state in which the power electronic firing commands of an inverter are momentarily blocked, causing both active and reactive currents to cease entirely. Picture this, when the voltage detected by the inverter exceeds or drops below a certain threshold, it halts the transmission of any current into the system while still maintaining its connection. But why was momentary cessation control introduced in the first place? Let's rewind to 2015 when new requirements emerged in California and Hawaii to enforce smart inverter functionality within distributed energy resources, DARE. This led to the inclusion of momentary cessation control in the IEEE 1547-2018 standard, specifically designed for the interconnection of distributed energy resources with the power system. So, what drove the introduction of momentary cessation in distributed energy resources? Distribution entities sought to ensure the safe and reliable operation of their distribution systems, driven by the fear of overvoltage or overcurrent caused by the injection of reactive current during faults. This measure was implemented to shield distributed energy resources inverters from such precarious conditions, safeguarding their longevity and performance. Let's explore the use of momentary cessation control mode in distributed energy resources or DER. The IEEE 1547 standard provides voltage requirements for DER, shown in a voltage curve. If the voltage goes outside the range of 0.5 per unit to 1.1 per unit, the DER can either momentarily stop supplying active and reactive current or have the ability to ride through voltage fluctuations. Beyond this range, the DER has the option to either ride through the voltage deviation or activate a trip function. The decision on whether to use ride-through or trip function is typically made by distribution system companies and DER owners. However, many DER systems have chosen the trip function and have not implemented ride-through capability, as it was not mandatory. Interestingly, this momentary cessation control mode and trip function, originally designed for distribution system connected DER to ensure safety, have also been observed in many inverted based resources or IBR plants connected at the transmission level where it was not required. This has posed a significant challenge. In the past, there was no specific standard for a large solar and wind power plant connected to the transmission grid by inverter-based technology. Inverter manufacturers used the DER inverter standard for IBR inverter design, which resulted in momentary cessation control mode being implemented. 
This is why we are experiencing momentary cessation issues in IBR systems connected to the transmission grid. These inverters, known as legacy inverters, lack fault right through capability and are designed with momentary cessation in accordance with the IEEE 1547 standard. To put it simply, if an IBR system with momentary cessation control mode detects a low or high voltage issue on the AC side due to a disturbance, it stops injecting any current into the system if the voltage falls below or exceeds the momentary cessation threshold limits. This means there is no exchange of active or reactive power during the disturbance. Once the voltage is restored, the inverter resumes its normal operation, although there may be a slow recovery of active power. The momentary cessation control mode in IBR has a significant impact on the overall power system. When IBR operates in this mode, there is a complete loss of active power generation, leading to a decrease in system frequency. Additionally, there is a loss of reactive power injection, which means that the IBR cannot provide voltage support to the nodes it is connected to during faults or disturbances. This reduction in reactive power weakens the overall system, causing a higher voltage drop and affecting the performance of other IBR units. Moreover, after a voltage recovery, the IBR resumes active power injection, but at a slower rate. This can result in high voltages in the system, leading to the tripping of IBR units and other equipment. Ultimately, the momentary cessation mode can cause the IBR units to trip during voltage disturbances, resulting in significant generation losses. Let me give you two examples of momentary cessation observed in IBR during a fault on a nearby transmission system. In the first example, when the fault occurred, all inverters at the plant entered momentary cessation. This means that most of the inverters either tripped or experienced a delay in recovering active power. As a result, there was a significant reduction in active power generation, and the recovery of active power was observed to be slow and significantly delayed. In the second example, the plant had legacy inverters that were designed with momentary cessation enabled at a voltage threshold of 0.875 per unit. In this case, when the fault occurred, the inverters entered momentary cessation mode and had a delay of 1.02 seconds before starting to recover active power. Additionally, the ramp rate for restoring active power output was set at 8.2% per second. Similar to the first example, the active power output was significantly reduced, and the recovery of active power was observed to be slow. Now, let's dive into the intriguing question of whether we can bid farewell to momentary cessation in these legacy inverters. Legacy inverter-based resources, IBR, often possess hardware and software limitations that stem from a design philosophy reliant on momentary cessation. These limitations can make it challenging or even infeasible to eliminate its usage altogether. One hardware limitation arises from the line voltage sensing circuits used for synchronization. These circuits may struggle to operate accurately at low voltages due to voltage distortion, phase jumps, and harmonic issues. This poses a significant hurdle in eliminating momentary cessation. On the software side, a similar issue can be observed in the voltage synchronization control, specifically the phase-locked loop, PLL. At low voltage levels, the PLL may become inoperable, further complicating the elimination of momentary cessation. These are just a couple of examples highlighting the hardware and software challenges faced by legacy IBRs. It's crucial to address these issues to pave the way for advancements in inverter technology. If completely eliminating momentary cessation is not feasible, the next question arises, can we modify its settings to optimize its functionality? Let's find out. Thankfully, there are measures that can be deployed as features in these inverters to improve their performance. Let's take a closer look at some of these strategies. First is reducing the low voltage threshold for momentary cessation. By setting the threshold to the lowest feasible value, we can ensure that the inverter responds more effectively to voltage fluctuations, even at low levels. Second is increasing the high voltage threshold for momentary cessation. Setting the high voltage threshold to at least the voltage right through curve levels enables the inverter to withstand higher voltage surges, enhancing its resilience during power disturbances. Third is reducing the recovery delay. The recovery delay refers to the time interval between voltage recovery and the resumption of current injection. By minimizing this delay to the smallest value possible, for example, on the order of 1 to 3 electrical cycles, the inverter can swiftly restore its operations, minimizing disruptions to the power system. Fourth one is increasing the active power ramp rate upon returning from momentary cessation. 
Boosting the active power ramp rate to at least 100% per second enables the inverter to rapidly ramp up its power output once momentary cessation is resolved, contributing to a more seamless power flow. These measures hold the potential to optimize the performance of legacy inverters, even in the presence of momentary cessation. By implementing these strategies, we can enhance the stability and reliability of power systems. Get ready for a thrilling revelation in the world of inverter-based resources. Despite the 2018 revision of the IEEE 1547 standard, it's astonishing to learn that there were still no specific standards in place for IBRs connecting with the transmission system at that time. But fear not, for a beacon of hope emerged. In response to the challenges faced by IBRs, IEEE stepped forward and introduced a groundbreaking standard in 2022. Brace yourself for the IEEE 2800 standard for inverter-based resources interconnecting with associated transmission electric power systems. This new standard marks a pivotal moment, as it sets forth the requirements and guidelines for IBRs when connecting with transmission systems. With IEEE 2800, the power industry can finally embrace a comprehensive framework tailored to address the unique demands of IBR integration at the transmission level. Prepare to be captivated as we delve deeper into the intricacies of the IEEE 2800 standard and uncover the transformative impact it holds for the future of inverter-based resources connecting with transmission electric power systems. The dawn of a new era in IBR standards is upon us. Hold on to your seats, as we unveil the exhilarating requirements mandated by the IEEE 2800 standard for inverter-based resources. First and foremost, say goodbye to momentary cessation. The IEEE 2800 standard prohibits the use of momentary cessation in IBRs, ensuring a continuous and uninterrupted flow of power. But that's not all. IBRs are now required to inject reactive power during faults, enhancing the stability and reliability of the power system. Furthermore, these remarkable inverters have the capability to dynamically adjust their active power output in response to voltage drops, while utilizing the available margin to inject reactive power. In an exciting development, the IEEE 2800 standard introduces the mandatory inclusion of low voltage ride through (LVRT) and high voltage ride through (HVRT) features in IBR inverters. This empowers these resources to withstand voltage variations and disturbances, maintaining a stable operation throughout. To add to the intrigue, the standard introduces a synonym for momentary cessation, current blocking. This term refers to the temporary blocking of controlled current exchange with the transmission system, TS, when applicable voltages experience a disturbance. However, the IBR retains the capability to swiftly restore the output of controlled current exchange once the applicable voltages return to within defined ranges. Get ready to witness a groundbreaking transformation. The fault right through curve in the IEEE 1547 standard for distributed energy resources DARE and the curve in the IEEE 2800 standard for inverter-based resources are poles apart, my friends. Brace yourselves for an electrifying revelation. In the awe-inspiring realm of the IEEE 2800 standard, a wider range of mandatory operation emerges, pushing the boundaries of what IBRs can achieve. This means they have the capability to handle a broader spectrum of challenges empowering them to navigate through even the most demanding conditions with unparalleled grace and finesse. But that's not all. The IEEE 2800 standard brings unprecedented clarity to the table. The requirements are now finely defined, providing a crystal clear roadmap for IBRs to follow. No more guesswork or ambiguity a it's all about precision and efficiency. Now, Let's explore the thrilling advancements observed through the adoption of setting changes in legacy inverters and the mandatory requirements laid out in the IEEE 2800 standard for new inverters. Prepare to be amazed as we witness a remarkable shift in the performance of IBRs during power system faults. Gone are the days of IBRs causing disruptions to power system. The inverter technology have risen to the occasion, and now adding features so to become a true guardians of grid stability. Their actions now work harmoniously to stabilize the system, ensuring a smoother and more reliable operation. Stay on the edge of your seat as we dive deeper into the incredible improvements brought about by these transformative changes. Together, we will unravel the mysteries, witness the astonishing performance of IBRs, and embrace a future where stability reigns supreme in the realm of power systems. Get ready to be electrified. Do like subscribe and share the content if you like. Stay tuned. Thank you.